Hi, everybody. Like most designers, I'm a total type addict, but I try to keep it under control when working with maps. It's important to choose type carefully for maps to make the information easily readable. Over the years, I've identified several typefaces I keep coming back to, so hopefully my experience with this issue will save you some time. Most type falls into two main categories, serif and sans serif. Serif type has little feet called serifs. Sans serif means without serifs. Serif type is usually used for print, while sans serif is commonly used online, but there are no rules about that. Both sans and serif type can be used effectively on maps. For most maps, sans serif is a better choice for one reason. It's more legible at really small sizes, and most of the labels on a map will be small. As a rule, I try to use typefaces that have a wide range of weights. This gives you more options to choose from. Here are my recommendations with a few examples and comments. Helvetica. I'm normally not a huge fan of Helvetica, but for maps it's my first choice. It comes in a huge range of weights and widths. Helvetica Condensed is my go-to choice for map labels. It's compact and highly legible, even at very small sizes, and also has a good choice of weights. Here it is on some maps. Frutiger. Frutiger is also an excellent choice. It's my second favorite, and it's the typeface used on National Park Service maps. It comes in a wide range of weights and has an excellent condensed set. Compared to Helvetica, Frutiger has a bit more style and it's very readable at small sizes, so it's definitely worth a look. And here it is on some maps. Universe Universe is another good choice for maps. It includes a wide range of variations, including extended and condensed versions, and some really compressed ones. And here it is on some maps. Adobe Myriad. Myriad is a good choice for maps, especially if you're looking for a slightly more casual feel. It comes in a huge range of weights and widths, and the condensed fonts are good for maps. It also has semi-condensed and semi-extended versions. And here it is on some maps. Serif type can be useful if you want a look that's classy or more like a vintage map. One caveat is that there are very few condensed serif fonts that look good. The best serif fonts to use are in the Adobe OpenType format. These include true small caps and, most importantly, swash capitals. These can really set your type apart from the ordinary. Which of these would you rather have? Serif type really shines when used for large bodies of water. Serif type usually requires additional letter spacing. If you use it for curved labels, the letters can often overlap around sharp curves. Avoid this by using letter spacing or adjusting the position of the words on the path. You may also need to add extra spaces between words. You can do this in QGIS or Illustrator. Avoid typefaces like Bodoni or Dido that have thin strokes. These will be impossible to read at small sizes. Useful serif typefaces. Adobe Caslon. Adobe Caslon is a good choice for several reasons. It's an elegant classic and it's in open type format with excellent swash characters, alternates, and small caps. Here it is on a map. Adobe Garamond. Adobe Garamond is another great serif choice and also comes in a good condensed version, a rarity for a serif typeface. It's also in open type format, so it has all of the extra characters you might need. Adobe Brioso. My favorite serif typeface for maps is Adobe Brioso Pro. It has a calligraphic feel which gives a classy vintage look and has a full set of swash capitals and other additional characters. The italic is especially attractive. Here it is on a few maps.
Google Font Alternatives If your boss is too cheap to pay for the fonts you really want, there are some excellent and free Google Fonts you can use. Since most maps really need at least some use of a condensed font, I'm only listing those here. I'm also excluding typefaces with only one weight or style. Here are my favorites. Open Sans. This excellent font used to come in a wide range of weights, but now it's a variable font. This gives you even more control over the width and weight, but it's a bit more work to use. Open Sans is highly readable at small sizes. Archivo. Archivo is an excellent typeface family with a wide range of weights and widths. This is a great and free substitute for Helvetica Condensed. Here's an example. Roboto. Roboto is a good alternative to Helvetica and comes in both regular and condensed widths. There's also a nice slab version. Fire Sands. Fire Sands has a wide range of weights and contains two condensed options. Barlow. This is a really versatile type family that includes regular, condensed, and semi-condensed versions. Source Sans. This is a great Sans font, and I use it a lot, even though there's no condensed version. It's not on Google Fonts, but it's free. Do a search for it. Source Serif. This is the Serif companion to Source Sans. This isn't on Google Fonts either, but it's free. Just do a search for it. Type Conventions. There are a few rules you should follow when adding labels to maps. All of these factors can be easily controlled in QGIS. Rivers and bodies of water should be in italic. If your ocean areas are in blue, use a darker shade of blue for the labels. Land areas such as states, provinces, or countries should be labeled in all caps with extra letter spacing. Other fonts to consider. Here are some other fonts that can be useful in special situations. Copperplate. I've used copperplate for maps to suggest a rugged, outdoorsy feel. It's useless for small labels, and it's definitely not condensed, but it can work well for names of states or countries, especially if spaced appropriately, like in this example. Futura. Futura can be a good choice if you need a very modern Bauhaus-type look. Avenir. Avenir is another modern style typeface that's a little more readable than Futura and a bit less German. Trade Gothic. This is a useful typeface that includes condensed and extended versions. Installing Fonts. If you want to use Google Fonts on your maps, you'll need to install them on your computer. To get step by step instructions, do a search for Install Fonts Windows 10 or whatever your computer's operating system is. You'll need to restart your computer to use the newly added fonts. Famous Maps National Geographic National Geographic Maps use a proprietary font called Ritiford, which is not available to the public. With that in mind, I've come up with a table of suitable substitutes. All of these are available for free from Google Fonts. Here's how these look. In 2016, National Geographic switched to a font called Geograph, which you can buy for $720. London Tube Map The London Tube or Subway Map is well known for its excellent clean design. The typeface used is called New Johnston. P22 Underground is virtually identical and you can find it for free. Cabin from Google Fonts is a good substitute. Search for Johnston font to find other versions, including free ones. Mixing type. You can mix serif and sans serif type on a map, but be careful about this. Don't use more than one family of each. Here are some examples of this. Tips. Don't use type with really thin strokes. It may not print correctly, and it will be hard to read on screen. Don't use horizontal scaling to try to squeeze a regular font into a condensed one. It will look terrible and be hard to read. Don't use sizes below 6 points for print maps or 9 points for screen maps. Use uppercase and letter spacing for area labels. 
Use a visual hierarchy. More important features should have more prominent labels. This also applies to cities. Large cities should have bigger labels than small ones. Remember, the entire purpose of type on a map is to be easily readable. This doesn't mean you should only use plain, boring fonts. It means don't use elaborate scripts or grunge type. Type on a map is informational, not decorative. Resist the urge to be edgy. It's all for nothing if people can't read it. A final bit of advice. Whatever you do, don't use times. And if you're considering using Comic Sans, it's time to reconsider your life choices. Check out my designer's guide to creating great maps at themapguide.net slash guide and download two free chapters. That's it for now. See you next time.